Welcome back to the Happy Hour, guys. Well, we promised you more from our interview with beer god Adam Avery months ago, so for all you beer folk and non-beer folk alike, here's Adam Avery, the founder of the Avery Brewing Company in The Wisdom of Adam. Enjoy. Thank you for taking time. Yes. Sure. We're here with the man himself, Adam Avery, who started this whole Megillah back in 1993. Correct. Tell us about that. What was it like starting up this brewery back at that point? Uh, it was, uh, I kind of reflected back and just realized what a dumb punk I was. Thinking, uh, <laughs> I was 26, 27 years old and had only homebrewed for a couple of years and was uh, looking for something to do with my life. And, and my friends were like, hey, you make great beer. You should think about, you know, opening a microbrew. I just decided to run up a business plan and eventually my dad was like, that looks good. And one of his friends was like, that looks good. So. $90,000 and we started a little tiny brewery capable of producing, I think, uh, 800 barrels. And so we were, we saw the whole place down here, all the garages. We were just in one little garage. So yeah, it's, yeah, it's kind of weird to be, you know, sitting in this luxurious... <laughs> yeah, sitting here in the being filmed by famous filmmakers. Famous filmmakers. <laughs> you know, we started making an IPA in 1996. Mm -hmm. We made New World Porter in 1997, which is a black IPA. Now there's kind Fantastic. of... There's a lot of beers that are doing like that black beer that's very, very hoppy. So we did that in 97. What was the tipping point? Was there like a gut check moment where you were like, come on, come on. That was it. 1998 was, you know, dad and I haven't paid ourselves for a couple of years. We weren't making any money. And so I thought, hey, if we're going to go down, we're going to go down in, you know, tasty flames. <laughs> really hoppy, tasty flames. Right so we made Hog Heaven. And the funny thing about that is that that beer, like I said, really put us on the map. So like. Uh, Greg Cook from Stone drank the beer in 99, mm. called me up, they self-distributed. And they said, hey, we're going to have a few brands that we're going to bring on board to self-distribute. And I love Hog Heaven. It's a great beer. You guys helped each other out. Absolutely. Yeah. Best friends in the industry are actually guys that are making beers that are very, very similar to ours. As far as, not exactly, but like, you know, bigger flavor, right. artful barrels, high alcohol, high hops, things like that. But we come together because we know that we're just a niche in a niche. Craft beer is this big, and right. then you know what we're doing is about you know maybe this big. We're in it's preaching the same thing, which is you know flavor first, you know mm -hmm. um, you know quality over quantity. All our money goes into making our beer better. So we don't have an advertising fund. We don't do print advertising. All our money goes into having the best equipment that we possibly afford, using the best ingredients that we can. You know, having fun with these barrels. Yeah. You know, but we, I mean, we think we've always found that. That craft brewers make great neighbors. Well, our neighbors love us and hate us because we're <laughs> high usage. We have a lot of trucks rolling through. Yeah. <laughs> As you can see, that at the end of the day, they can come in here and drink, yeah. typically for at least half off, if not for free, depending on you know what we've done to them. <laughs> <laughs> and I don't sit in this chair. I swear to God, I don't come back here. Master of my domain. <laughs> this isn't what staff meetings look like. Yeah, exactly. No, 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 no. How do you come up with the, the names for your beers? I like to have names that make people wonder, you know, what does that mean? I'm so recovering Catholic. Okay. So, <laughs> Salvation, yeah. Reverend, yeah. Uh, Demon Demon series, series, you know. Yeah. So the beast, you know, is the, is the uh, Christian version of the devil. Right. So then I was like, well, I'll just name some other demons. So Mephistopheles. <laughs> That's a literary, you know. The third is Samael's, which is the Jewish angel of death. So. Wow. Uh, yeah. I don't know how. You got all your bases covered. Yeah. yeah. Or you're getting it. You're following your own philosophy. You're having fun with it. Absolutely. You can't control everything. You can't do everything yourself. Right. And if you do, I think you stay small. And that's a lot of the reason why we still are kind of small. I mean, I think that the perception out there is maybe that we're a little bit bigger than we actually are. Yeah, we sell a little bit of beer in a lot of markets. We're in 33 states, Denmark and Sweden. We want to get as big as we possibly can making the beers that we want to drink. Right. So let's recap the wisdom of Adam. Whether you're starting a brewery or any other kind of small business, hang in there. Keep your friends in the industry close. Remember, flavor first. Be great neighbors. You can't control everything, and hey, have fun naming your products. Oh, and Adam, one other thing. What the heck is the difference between a double IPA and an imperial IPA? I always kind of think that imperial is like this over the top, you know, like over 10%, you know, like, you know, way, 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 way hot. And then there's IPAs, and then there's so many beers in between. So, then, so I always call this middle ground, you know, the 8%, a double IPA. So happy our hopheads look for a Dugana IPA from Avery in the coming months. Yeah, sure. I'll have to say these guys waited for two hours because my silly ass wasn't here. <laughs> on time. So I really appreciate it. Thanks, guys. We made some friends. Exactly. Yes, I figured they'd be drinking free beer, so I don't feel so bad. <laughs> yeah.